everybody, I'm Dennis Daly. I spent 20 years with United Press International, most of it with the old UPI radio network. And my favorite assignment was going on the road producing and hosting American Montage. It was an hour-long weekly program. Now here's an edited version of one of those shows. This week we come to you from Banning, California. It is out in the desert, a city that was a stopping off point, a very busy point on the early stagecoach, but now the interstate has come through and made it rather difficult to get there. Yes, there's an exit, but the city has literally been cut in half. I walked down the main street of Banning, California, and ran into an interesting fellow named Mark Hendon. Mark runs a gun shop and sells firearms there. His family has been in Banning for quite a long time. I thought it would be fun to talk about what it's like to live in a small town that used to be the center of activity and now has almost been bypassed by the big interstate highway. Mark and I walked down the main street in front of his store as he reminisced about the history of Banning, California. I've got a telephone book in this shop, 1946, and the front piece of it, it tells how Banning was the second largest growth community in California. Unfortunately, they don't say which one was number one, but we first came out here in 1959 on vacation. My aunt and uncle had lived here since the middle, well, actually since the early 40s, and Banning was a bustling community. That was, that was a cafe, that was a cafe, this was a dress shop, that was a dress shop, the theater was here. The whole width and breadth of Ramsey Street from about 8th Street to the end of town was all businesses, same as Livingston. Viable, good businesses. Uh, in 60, about 63, 64 when they started building the freeway, uh, basically what they did is they took Livingston, which was one of, one of the main thoroughfares, and just cut it off. They, the buildings that were there on both sides of Livingston were, were taken down and they cut off, they cut the town in half. That had, a, that had a major impact. I think one of the things that it facilitated was the fact that prior to the freeway it was relatively difficult to go out of Banning. You had to get in a car, you had to drive a two-lane road to wherever you wanted to go. Well, well the freeway allowed you to get on the freeway and speed to the next largest town, which at that time would have been Riverside or San Bernardino. And so the downtown gradually became less viable as a retail uh, center because the people that had had the businesses were dying off. They were selling the businesses off to people that were probably not real capable of running a business. Customer would come in, they would be treated what they thought was shabby, They'd go, they'd go to Riverside to buy their product. Yeah, a part and parcel in that is, is you now had an alternative to shopping here. Exactly, and the alternative, I, I personally think, is what made a big difference in the way our, town, our downtown grew. Now, I wonder why no one questioned the fact that the interstate was put so close, so in, it had encroached so much. I mean, you see cities where it's some distance. It's a mile from downtown. It kind of swoops around. It, it, it's almost as if either no one had any cloud here, I mean, maybe it's hard in retrospect to figure out why, but it really, as, as you say, came up against the downtown section. I think that, uh, truth be known, the council at that time, like, like a lot of city councils that I've dealt with, they don't have the foresight to look to the future. They saw the immediate benefit to them, which would have been more people coming to town because the freeway was there. They didn't realize that the downside of that was if you can get to town, you can get out of town easier. So they, you know, they, they pretty much welcomed it with open arms. When the original freeway was built, there was only, I believe, two off-ramps to the freeway. And then later on, they put in more. Uh, they've always questioned why there wasn't an on-ramp, off-ramp at, at San Gregorio, which was the main drag of the city. You know, why didn't they put one there? Uh, you know, who knows? Uh, I... As I said earlier, I think that, you know, there, there might have been some type of scheme to, you know, destroy a bunch of little towns. Two years ago, we took a trip back east, and it seems like all the new freeways purposely skirted the towns. Uh, I don't know if that was economic, because it would have been cheaper to go outside of town and build a freeway rather than buy up commercial property and put a road in. But they definitely did not do that in Banning. And you can go to a lot of communities in Southern California and see that they were destroyed by putting the freeway through. You lost your you lost your identity of your community. You took groups of people that were historically cohesive and cut them in half by putting a freeway through them. Um, we we have a neighborhood 
in Arlington, Virginia, that is literally almost impossible to get to now. There, there was a new connector to make the Dulles International Airport a half an hour closer to downtown. And in putting in this connector, they cut through an area with but a single underpass to get there. Home values have dropped. It's as if the people live on an island out there now. And you see that quite often in California also. Now they're trying to remedy that by putting more off-ramps in, but then you have this you know, urban upheaval once again where they have to relocate families and things like that. And in California, it's extremely expensive, you know, to buy up the property, to relocate the homes. But prior to the freeway going through, with Highway 99 and Highway 60 coming right through the middle of town, it was a bustling metropolis. I mean, there was a lot of service-oriented businesses. You can still see evidence of the, of the gas stations that were here, the hotels that were here. There was a large number of hotels. And this was pretty much the midway point for going any place, it seems like. Plus, you go back 90 years ago, Banning was a jump-off point for the mountains, the, you know, the, the healthy environment in the mountains. There was a sanitarium in town for... Uh, uh, Tubercul asthmatic. Tuberculosis, that type of thing? I, I believe more asthmatics than it was tuberculosis. Tuberculosis was still sort of a, you know, a scary concept to have. But at that time, you came out here for the air, unlike... <laughs> what some people would say now. Yeah, well, the air, the water, the weather, you know, we're up about 2,500 feet, so it stays relatively cool here. This is before Palm Springs was ever thought of as being a community, you know, for the wealthy. And quite a few influential people li stayed in the past area. Irving Berlin wrote the, the song White Christmas in Banning. Uh, there's rumors that um, Einstein spent time in the city of Banning and was known to comment that it was the most beautiful spot on earth that he'd ever lived in. Uh, the theater across the street, which was built in the 20s, um, showed, and still shows, first-run movies. And a lot of the movie stars that, that were in the movies would come to Banning sort of incognito to see themselves because they were feared of being mobbed in L.A. at the premieres, so they would come out here and see themselves on the screen without fear of being mobbed by, the, by their fans. Uh, a lot of very, very interesting historical things took place in the past area. Uh, well, now, I don't know whether those listening at home were able to hear it, but there was a train went through, and the highway, the interstate, paralleled the tracks, which is very reminiscent of the I-66 right away in Arizona, that that was the, the way that both the railroad engineers and the highway engineers figure was the most economical way to get through the area. Is there passenger service? Is it all freight? What was it like when you were a child? Was rail important here? At one time, a lot of passengers came through the pass area, uh, especially like during the war. There was, you know, Patton's encampment out in the, in the uh, desert east of, east of here, and, you know, tens of thousands of troops passed through here. Uh, we still have a rail service coming through. In fact, there's plans of putting a, uh, a rail center here. I don't know if it'll ever come to fruition, but, you know, it would, it would be a natural for our area because we are centrally located to a lot of different things. I mentioned to Mark that of all the things Banning had, the one thing I noticed it didn't have was parking meters. That's true. In fact, uh, the Downtown Business Association uh, a year or so ago uh, petitioned the city and the city acquiesced to putting time requirements downtown. Uh, I guess it's, it sort of reflects on the mentality of the business owner. Uh, uh, several downtown business owners would park right in front of their store all day long. Uh, so their customers had no place to park and uh, we wanted to re, you know, redress that, that problem so what we did is we went to the city they were already putting together a parking plan we went in and gave them our input and so now we have you know one hour parking downtown. A visit to Banning, California. Our tour guide Mark Hendon, one of the local merchants there, explaining how Banning literally got cut in half when the interstate came through in the 1960s. And there you have it, another edited episode of one of the American Montage programs prepared for the UPI Radio Network back in the 1980s and 90s. I'm Dennis Daly. Thanks for listening. Thanks for going with me this week. And check YouTube for more American Montage programs.